Why do you say there's an illegal occupation of Gaza? Why did you say that? that Israel is, what? Is, is, has completely encircled Gaza. Nothing goes in, nothing goes Gaza out, as has. you know. Well, as you know, if you've been, Gaza also has a border with Egypt. Why do you not mention Egypt? Don't misinform your viewers. And Likewise. you can go back. Well, I'm not misinforming your viewers. I'm informing them because you're not. The point that I'm trying yes, to make, which Israel you keep moved away on, from Gaza and Gaza has been point, sealed off the ever point since. you keep on trying to dis distract everyone from is that Israel took every Jew from Gaza in 2005, handed it over to the Palestinians, who then voted in Hamas, and to the great detriment of the Palestinian people, they have been ruled by Hamas for the last 18 years. If you want to look to the source of the conflict, look to that fact. amount of potential in South Africa um, and it has been wasted uh, by the uh, government in recent years which has been so corrupt I mean so unbelievably corrupt um, on a scale which it just boggles the mind it's a sort of corruption of a sort of Middle Eastern level that, 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 that's how that's how uh, how good they that the leadership are at that um, all the time of course, it's, it's fascinating. They do. One of the things I found most interesting was, of course, South Africa's government's been grandstanding on the international stage in recent months by uh, taking Israel to the International Court of Justice for a charge of genocide they couldn't uh, hold up. Of course, they couldn't because it's not true. Um, but it was, it's very interesting, you know, whenever any government does something totally grandiose like that, uh, you can always tell they're going to distract you. They're trying to distract you uh, and particularly their people mm. from things they're not doing. You know, I said to audiences in South Africa, it's that question of you're meant to, you should look at the hand that the magician has that you're not meant to be looking at. Uh, and in the case of the South African government, the ANC, uh, corrupt ANC government, um, you know, they've presided over a period not just of this corruption, but, you know, uh, the lowest education standards in Africa. Uh, which, you know, I mean, I mean, Somalis are better educated than South Africans. Um, they've got f more than 50 percent youth unemployment, which I just everywhere I go when I notice that sort of thing, it's just the biggest tragedy. Young men in particular just hanging around with nothing to do. It's unbelievable, appalling. Many of them have actually got degrees because they were told that was the way to do it. And they're in debt and they're unemployable because there aren't any jobs. 
Um, these are the sorts of real world effects of uh, misgoverning a country like the ANC has in recent years. Uh, there's a there's a um, an election coming up. It's not quite clear how it'll shake out. Um, but uh, I would hope that the South African public will vote for dramatic change of scene because the ANC has so much goodwill in the 1990s uh, in the country and internationally. And they've just spent it and spilt it in totally unforgivable ways. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has discussed the rift in his relationship with US President Joe Biden. The growing tension between the allies comes as Israel prepares for a final assault on the southern city of Rafah, where millions of Palestinians have fled to. As the fighting continues in northern and central Gaza, the rift between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu appears to be deepening. On Tuesday, Netanyahu briefed his cabinet on his discussions with the president, using the word argument for the first time, and focusing on the upcoming offensive against the remaining Hamas elements in the southern city of Rafah, where millions of Palestinians have fled since the start of the war. We have an argument with the Americans about the need to enter Rafah. We see no way to eliminate Hamas militarily without destroying these remaining battalions. Diplomats were hoping a new ceasefire deal would prevent a large-scale offensive in the city, and negotiators are still holding talks in Qatar. But there's been little progress reported so far, other than the fact that both sides are still at the table. We are cautiously optimistic because the talks have resumed, and that is a good thing, and we hope that that uh, continues, and we hope to build upon uh, that in the coming uh, days. But time is running out. On Tuesday, the UN issued its strongest warning yet that northern and central Gaza are on the brink of famine, saying Israel must allow more aid into the conflict zone, and failing to do so could be considered a, quote, war crime. The clock is ticking. Everyone, especially those with influence, must insist that Israel acts. An Israeli delegation is traveling to the White House to brief administration officials on plans to protect civilians in Rafah. 